Nick Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of this day in sports history. In yesterday's episode, we saw the miracle at the Meadowlands, addition to when Deshaun Jackson had a walk-off punt return for a touchdown that gave the Eagles an improbable comeback victory over the Giants. We don't have anything quite like that today, but we do have some NHL to talk about, we have some MLB to talk about, and some NBA to get into. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. We will start out today in baseball in 1921, and the American League would vote to return to the best of seven World Series format, while the National League would vote for best of nine. So it would end up going down to the commissioner's vote. Kennesaw Mountain Landis would cast a deciding vote in favor of the American League, go back to the best of seven format, the one we know today. Move to the NFL now in 1925, and the Chicago Cardinals would win the championship at 11-2-1 after the Pottsville Maroons were suspended after playing an unsanctioned game. Back to the MLB, this time in 1926, and the St. Louis Cardinals would trade former MVP Rogers Hornsby to the New York Giants for Frankie Frisch and Jimmy Ring. Twelve years later in the NHL in 1938, the Boston Bruins rookie goalie Frankie Brimzek would record his third straight shutout with a 3-0 victory over the New York Americans, making this his sixth shutout in his first eight games in the NHL. Back to the MLB, this time in 1954, we would have the American League Rookie of the Year named and Yankees pitcher Bob Grimm, 20-6 on the season, a 3.26 ERA, would win the award. Twelve years later, in the NBA in 1966, the NBA would award the Seattle Supersonics a franchise starting for the 1967-68 season. Back to the NHL, this time in 1973, and Henri Richard of the Montreal Canadiens would score his 1,000th NHL point with an assist in the second period in a game against the Buffalo Sabres. Back to the NFL now in 1980, and NBC would broadcast the New York Jets-Miami Dolphins game, and they actually tried something different in this one. The Jets would end up winning their game 24-17, but this, the final game of the season for both of these teams, would be done without audio, something that NBC was experimenting with, and it's safe to say, it failed pretty spectacularly. Back to the NHL in 1981, and the Winnipeg Jets left wing Doug Smale would set an NHL record by scoring just 5 seconds into the game. The Jets would end up winning 5-4 over the St. Louis Blues on the day. Stay with the NHL in 1985, and Dennis Potvin would pass Bobby Orr as the leading scorer for an NHL defenseman ever, after an assist to get his 916th career point. Move up two years later now to 1987 in tennis at the 76th edition of the Davis Cup. Sweden would defeat India 5-0, and this would be Sweden's fourth of seven Davis Cup titles. Over to the NBA now in 1992, and Buck Williams would become only the 20th player in NBA history at the time to collect his 10,000th rebound, as the Trailblazers would end up defeating the Warriors on the day 130-114. to Over to the international world of football now in 1994 for the Ballon d'Or, and FC Barcelona's forward, Haristo Stoikov, would be named Europe's best football player ahead of Juventus striker Roberto Baggio and Milan defender Paolo Maldini. And we will end today's video off in 2012. In the MLB, and Edwin Jackson would join his 8th team in 11 years, signing a 4-year, $52 million contract with the Chicago Cubs. Now Jackson, if you know him, he's famous for playing for what seems like almost every MLB team. He has played for a total of 14 MLB teams, so 8th and 11 years seems about right. But that's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize, but I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick Dwyer and the 10th inning.